Thank you very much, John, uh, and good morning, everybody. Um, and thank you to Dominic for taking me on my first uh, whistle-stop tour of this fabulous uh, show. Uh, I must say, it has completely blown my mind. Um, I was impressed by the fact that Dominic managed to get lost uh, on the way to GL assessment, um, which I think just shows quite how this show has expanded. Now, you heard yesterday from uh, one of my bosses, I have lots of them, uh, Nicky Morgan, the Secretary of State for Education, uh, so I'm not going to speak for very long, um, but I do just want to reflect very briefly uh, on the role and the potential for technology in education. Uh, and I want to start by, uh, perhaps a little nervously, responding to something that Russell Hobby uh, wrote uh, in the run-up to the opening of this uh, exhibition. Uh, now I say nervously because Russell Hobby has forgotten more about education than I will ever know. Uh, and uh, I am duly uh, respectful of his expertise and authority. But I do think it was a little curious to suggest that uh, an estimated annual investment of £700 million uh, in technology, uh, in education, was somehow excessive uh, or a waste of money. After all, fundamentally, educators are trying to communicate and inspire. Now, it is a uniquely important role that they fulfill, but it is not unique to them, the mission to communicate and inspire. There are lots of other worlds in which that is what people are trying to do. And in none of those other worlds have they somehow turned their back on the possibilities offered by technology, either to save time spent on boring administrative work, or actually to assist in the process uh, of communicating and inspiring. And on my way here, I stopped off at a wonderful little startup company, Monster Phonics, that was using in a tremendously imaginative way all of the possibilities of technology uh, to communicate the different fundamental sounds that make up our language. And again, I found myself wondering, does Russell really think that it would be a waste of money for a teacher trying to instill the possibilities of language uh, into young people uh, to spend a bit of uh, their school's budget on working with monster phonics. I don't think so. And Russell actually uh, tried to equate the level of spend of £700 million pounds, uh, to the number of teachers that you could buy for that money. And I think he said 20,000. Now, we might quibble with his number. Uh, I think we think it would probably buy about 16,500. But I think the bigger point is that that would be roughly 4% of the teachers that we have in the country. Now, is he really suggesting that the investment of technology cannot make all of our existing teachers 4% more productive? or save 4% of their time in marking, in lesson planning, in assessment, so that they can then devote that time and energy to the creative work of lesson planning and of actual transference of ideas and knowledge and excitement about learning to young people. I would be amazed if technology was not adding at least 4% to the annual productivity efficiency of our teachers. So I have to say I disagree with Russell about this idea that the investment of £700 million a year by schools in uh, technology is somehow mistaken. But where I think he is right is to suggest that no minister, no bureaucrat, and nor indeed any headmaster is going to have a monopoly on the understanding of how technology should best be used. And so that leads me to the question of what is the proper role for government in supporting the exploitation of the possibilities of new technologies in education. It should not be, in my view, to be prescribing what technologies are used and how. 
nor, in my view, should it be prescribing, and I was a little shocked when I went to a sixth form college soon after being appointed, to discover that they thought that what was being suggested to them by the excellent group Feltag that has been looking into these issues was that they should measure every single lesson and work out what percentage of the time of that lesson was spent communicating using technology. That to me is exactly what should not be happening. We shouldn't be doing some form of a time and motion study to try and understand how people are using technology. What we should be doing is encouraging and enabling teachers themselves and young people themselves to explore, to experiment, uh, to try out. And then we, I think, do have a role in helping spread the ideas that work from one school and from one teacher across the whole population so that everybody can learn from each other's successes and indeed from each other's failures. So the two things that I would like to take forward after this week is the following. Firstly, I would like to encourage further education colleges, because it is further education that is my specific responsibility, I would like to encourage them to come forward with proposals for capital investment to bring up their broadband capacity to one gig. And I do believe that within a few years, hopefully after the next spending review, it should be possible to ensure that every FE college in the country has at least one gig of broadband capacity. Because if they don't have that, then you can't experiment, you can't innovate, you can't try out those new technologies and those new approaches. The other thing I'd like to pursue is something that was suggested in a round table that we held at number 10 Downing Street yesterday with a number of the leading providers of technology in education, as well as with Dominic, uh, who I'm very glad was able to take some time out of bet to attend. And the idea was simply this, that in government, we do have a role in creating a platform of spreading best practice. So that as teachers, you're not endlessly, randomly searching on Google to try and find out what things different people have used to good effect. But there is one place that you can go, one place that will show you the different assessment tools, the different lesson planning tools, uh, the different uh, communication tools that have been used by others working in the same field or the same subject area or maybe with the same group of young people that gives you the best ideas of what others have used and what others have worked. So we will be working with the industry to come up with a cheap, simple, effective platform for the spread of best practice. And then ultimately, I think it's up to you. It's over to you. It's over to the fantastic companies in this exhibition to be promoting their ideas and their products and their services. And it's up to you, teachers and believers in the potential of technology to transform the way that we communicate and inspire. And I'm absolutely certain that together we will be able to make education in the future much more exciting than it has ever been. Thank you very much. Minister, thank you very much for those words.